My name is Andy and welcome back to another exciting episode of Logic Live here. This is episode 15 and uh, we have Joel Osis with us today. I know everybody has been waiting for this. I know I've been waiting for this and it's going to be a fantastic episode. So let's get underway. As always, uh, Logic Live is brought to you by our friends at Synesis Oceana, solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. Uh, Synesis has been my uh, reseller for 15 years. We could not do what we do without them. They've always been supporters of the Flame community. They support user groups all over their, all over North America and have always sponsored uh, things like One Frame of White and Logic Fest. So I want to thank them very much for their continued support. Uh, check out all their offerings at Synesis.io. Synesis Oceana, supporting Flame Artists since 1997. Also want to thank our friends over at Boris FX. I don't know how many of you saw, but Boris FX has a 50% off uh, silhouette paint exclusive for uh, Logic users. Uh, their offer expires June 30th. I'm going to paste the link in uh, the chat right now, as well as uh, links for uh, upcoming episodes. So feel free to register for those. But do try to take advantage of this offer from Boris FX. It's great. I think Ross from Boris mentioned that if you were to use this for the Mocha Pro and Silhouette bundle, you're essentially getting one of them for free. So definitely take advantage of that. And thanks to the guys over at Boris FX. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to invite the man, the myth, the legend, Joel Osis, to join us. And let me stop my screen share here. All right. Hey. What's up? How's it going, man? Good. How you doing? <laughs> what? It's like um, it's like a screenplay. It's like you know, fade up. Joel Osis enters I got, room. I got my home set up, dog. So I'm good. Yeah. That sounds great, man. You can look fantastic. Uh, it's nice and bright and sunny there. It's pretty nice out. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Excellent. How's All right. The, well, hey, let's just. How's the quarantine thing going for you? Oh, for me, it's going great. I have to say, I've uh, well, it's been going well, as well as can be expected. You know, um, uh, I've just been trying to fill my time as much as I can with like with this stuff, and it's just great to have everybody in the community kind of pitch in and, and offer to, to, you know, keep this kind of sense going. It's, it's, uh, we haven't had a user group in a while and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad, you know, actually I, I, my favorite user group moment of all the New York user groups we ever did was one that, that you were at. Uh, mm -hmm. we had, I think, I think it was, Will was there. I think it was somebody from Autodesk was there and they were showing off all like the incredible new features of whatever the new release is. And everybody was going, you know, nodding and going, yes, thank you. This is very, and then, you know, Joel Osa steps up, you know, and sits behind the flame and shows how you can, you can like connect two nodes in batch across like the split screen and the room went crazy. I remember, I, mean, I remember that. I wasn't even <laughs> supposed to be speaking, but I was like, can I show you this? And then it was, <laughs> it was funny. I felt. Oh, it was great. Sorry, it was awesome. Oh, totally. And dude, you've always like uh, uh, kind of like for me, I always come up with like the most amazing uh, hacks is a word that doesn't do it justice, but just like a, a like a um, kind of like a unique rethink or a perspective on the tools that are available. Uh, I was just going through your site at jolosis.com before this. And, you know, there's even the first one that was up there, the, like the, the data moshing to help, you know, motion mm -hmm. vectors work and everything. Um, is there, is there like a, a secret behind your, your, your outlook, uh, about your, your, your way of looking at things? I wish there was It's more just, I, I know there's ways to do things and I'll do stuff like I'll redo jobs when I get home sometimes just to see if I can do it different. And, you know, just, that's what I love about our job is we're always solving problems and like, I like solving and finding new solutions to things that might not work without having to, and I know sometimes it's best to step out of flame for a lot of things, but sometimes I like to just see what I can tinker with and get going. And I just love, uh, I love the exploring part. And then I get really excited when I figure it out and then I'd be excited to share it. You know what I mean? Totally. Oh, that's great, man. Well, why don't we jump right in? What have you got for us today, man? Okay. So for the Torontonians that are here, they might be let down because I'm showing some stuff I showed at the last, user group that wasn't uh, broadcast, but getting archives here and permissions on a job I was going to do hasn't released yet because of Corona, but um, yeah, so this is still going to be uh, cool. I hope so. This will be do a little fade. So this is the uh, Roger spot um, and it's going to be a McDonald's. Uh, just let me adjust my mic. A McDonald's uh, 
guy as well. And I might just try something really quickly. Give me one second. I'm not completely barring you. Just to, All right. before Joel gets started, I just want to remind everyone, if you do have a question, please put the questions in the Q&A panel um, and I'll make sure that Joel, uh, Joel gets them. All right, man, fire away. All right, so yeah, this spot was uh, done obviously pre-COVID because of all these people next to each other. And funnily enough, there wasn't enough, uh, like every time we shoot, you can never get enough extras. So we were hoping for 150 to 200 um, and the most they could get was uh, on this shot here, it was 70, I think. And they really wanted it to feel big and, you know, for less money and less crowd as they always do. Um, so the really tricky thing with this was when we did get on set, um, and a lot of these are like extra crowd elements. Um, like these guys' foregrounds are just stolen from other things. Same with these guys at the start are kind of stolen. Same with these guys. This guy's was the only one that actually had the normal crowd. But the thing that came up on set is we actually had to kill a couple shots because um, if you're shooting union people, uh, if you duplicate them, you actually uh, you have to pay them for every time they're duplicated, which is stupidity. And no one uh, thought to ask that question before we got into this. So that was fun. Um, and then the, the real big uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So the real big uh, hero for this was where was this shot here, which was supposed to form their uh, their logo here, which is their new at the time, infinite data plan. So it was all about uh, getting a drone shot and uh, being able to make it match intercut and feel like it was part of the same scene. So this was actually, there was a bit, there was probably a couple weeks of uh, R&D with our 3D guy, Tom, who uh, was actually brave because when he signed on where I work at Alter Ego, he took that job on. And we're, I remember I asked him, I was like, you've done crowds before? He's like, nope. I was like, okay, sweet. I love your well, you're about to. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I'm just going to jump into the crowd build. So this one actually had a annoying problem um, with restores. I don't know if any of you guys have had them too, but with when you use multi-clip on the import, um, uh, not through here on the Media Hub, but um, hang on, actually, let me just actually mirror my screen properly. One second. Yeah, I think I just saw actually uh, someone post that yeah. So when you restore, about... when you restore it, uh, it only, you only get the top channel and you get nothing else. <laughs> it's really dumb. So if you're soft linking, <laughs> uh, only the one channel comes back. So yeah, that's, that's a good, uh, gotcha. But yeah, so again, to begin with, we, this was our, uh, so this was essentially tracked at like, like the day of the shooting. So because the turnaround for this whole job was, I think we had a four or five days from when we shot, but there was two weeks prior where we were doing the uh, crowd sims and stuff like that. So this is just our kind of base uh, track after we got it shot. Um, and this was at like six ish in the morning on um, like downtown. Um, and you know, we shut the street down for a little bit and it worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, we got the shot chosen on set and then sent to the tracker. Um, and then the ironic part with this is this is like one of the only shots the flame tracker probably could track. So there's that. Um, and if we go further through, um, this is just like our clean plate. I'm just going to play that through. I'll scrub through actually. It's a little bit nicer, but yeah. So again, it's just like a nice shot to add a crowd in and, you know, do tracking and add projections and get it all going. So there was a usual, like, you know, removal of everything. So if we just kind of jump through all these little stages, once it wakes up. Okay, so this is just like the first thing where we swapped bits for where it made sense for the crowd to be kind of in. Um, and again, this is like, there's multi, many different patches that were done for this. Just uh, the, you know, the normal projection way, just grab your frame, you're gonna paint on, freeze, and then put back into the main comp. Um, so yeah, so when we did get into the main comp, so this is my actual projector setup. Hey, Joel. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, but the, the image that we're getting, uh, from the flame is, is a little, a little soft. Okay. Or it might be, a, I don't want to make sure everybody can see my, all the detail. Let me see if it's my zoom settings, video settings. 
I have uh, I have HD enabled, so it should be good. Uh, let me just double check. Could you do me a favor then? Um, mm -hmm. After you check, could mm -hmm. you just start a recording on your end? Sure. And then you can send it to me after, and then we'll I'll compare the two before I uh, I put it up. It could just sure. be you know it's a busy internet day. Yeah, I've always found Zoom will kind of choose what to, it's better with talking heads. That's from my experience. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll start a recording on my end too. Cool, All right. thanks man. Um, cool, um, let me just make sure that it is. But point. you're right, of all the shots that uh, Flames Tracker, 3D Tracker could probably get. It's literally this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's at, that's at, Quinn. it is at Talking HD. heads, love that band. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so yeah, and this might be, not as good too because it is like flat as well so if we go out uh, again so the projector setup was was here so this is just if i go space up four this was the uh the little proxy world geo just for the cleanup and the paint right mm -hmm. and then again the comp stuff that we did have um so the front pass came through for this so this was our uh, our cg crowd and then we just kind of combined but there's bits not working because of the, uh, the, the restore. restore, of course. Um, let me do this. Let me just do that and do that. That should. Where did that geo come from that you were projecting onto? Uh, that geo was just part of what I requested for um, when we did the uh, uh, the tracker guy. We just asked for a geo, um, so it was just proxy geo put in. But again, that stuff could have been put in pretty easily in Flame too. Joel, um, can I inter interrupt you one more time? Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, in, in Zoom, when you did your screen share, mm -hmm. um, did you have that little checkbox check that says optimize for, um, for video? Uh, well, maybe that's it, because I'm not screen sharing, right? I'm just using my, my camera. Let me do a screen share then. Hang on. Okay. Uh, and if so, don't, don't check that box. That, that drops quality for uh, fluidity. The screen. Sorry to throw you off, but I, I appreciate okay. it. It's all good. All right, so... Okay, I'm gonna just go to Zoom and now I'll go. Well, we can we can now admire Tom's uh, Tom's brilliant work here on this frame. And I'd go present. I'll share screen. One second. Host disabled participant screen sharing. You set me up. Uh, you set no me up, Andy. That. Hold on. The real question is, do I trust you? Um, There you go. Now you should be good to go. Okay, screen share. And I'll share this guy. Um, so yeah, don't don't check the optimize for screen sharing. Correct. Only an cool. engineer would write that button. Okay. There we go. Um, is that like at, at full res, like at the full screen you can see? Um, no, I'm seeing the OBS. Um, okay, let me um, let me view. Uh, full screen, full screen. There, that's full screen, right? Yes, sir. All right, Sweet. let me just clear these panels out. Thank you, Joel. Oh, cool. sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, so we just had our normal passes that you'd expect from the CG. So this was just our beauty. Um, we had some other ones that I didn't end up using and then just pre-malt color correct as you'd expect. Um, again, I don't know if these are gonna. Oh, they are displaying, but they're weird because the uh, I had to repipe the thing because the yeah that didn't even come through. Let me just try cheating it with this um, this alpha channel. That might do part of what it was doing. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Wait. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, nothing really crazy going on with comp stuff. Um, and then again, so these are. In this one, this was our holdout. So this was using the proxy geo um, just with the FBX. And I go space mm -hmm. up four. Is it going to show? It's probably too wide. Oh, yeah, the scale's all weird. So you can see bits of it on the edge. Um, and then again, I did some extra little holdout mats for trees. So these are just kind of painted from my projection and then frozen in output. And these are all combined just for, from a mat perspective, to then put back onto 
to this stuff to knock back where the crowd was interacting because that's always the thing with these is you have to figure out where that's going and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, so the main, the main over is here. And again, it's just, there's our crowd kind of comped in. And this is all pre-color, by the way, um, which proved to be annoying. A little bit of air glow from Lewis Saunders, great plugin. I'm not, uh, I'm not knocking you, Ivar, your glow is cool too. I'll just use this one a little bit more. <laughs> all right. And then this was kind of where, what, where it ended up pre, pre color and pre back in type of thing. So if we didn't go to the timeline and this one was trickier too, cause we had to kind of go to from one wider shot to make it feel like a helicopter kind of zoom out shot and then to the logo, but all lined up type of thing. So I'll just um, make this full screen and I'll just play this last part just so you can see the end result. So that's where we ended up. And then there's like transition, transition, transition. But yeah, so this one was trickier because if I go into the first part for this crowd guy, um, and again, these were uh, using the, once we got colored. So we ended up at the last minute, I think they changed the, they changed the lighting, but it didn't kind of work. And I don't know, it was kind of one of those ninja swaps that you don't tell them about. So this was kind of what was working just what changed to kind of help it because originally as well the the light was coming from behind um and his uh his cg matched where it wasn't like a hard hard shadow you know uh because the, the light was south you know coming forward so it was a bit again like it was you know you get those colors they want to put lens flare and then you got to rematch it right so mm -hmm. there's there's that guy and then this was again just some extra little things just to help it out once we saw it in context. And then the key for this one was this was our, uh, this was our full gate for the amount of people we had and the take that was chosen. It was one of those big uh, techno cranes, I think. Um, and then that gets comped into an action uh, just using really like, these were just like trials and errors of like the zoom out and the, how much I could get away with to kind of match it in. But I always will use the, um, for this, specifically for the crowd thing, uh, the auto expand, which is at the bottom of the UI, you can't see, but in perspective, because it's just easier to ripple stuff out that way. But if I scrub through, you can see kind of the rate of like these, the, the shot was stabilized. So then I could zoom out at the right time just to kind of, it, it wasn't meant to feel like one shot, but it just, to, they wanted it to have that like quick pullback, but not too quick in the cheapy kind of, you know, zoom and like right. flashes and, you know, Right, it's finding that right balance between like zoom and 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 motion blur and yeah, without time. being cheese, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then also finding that balance of building it in a way that's interactive, right? Which we all have to do, which is the hardest the hardest part. Uh, so this is the other bit where we went to the uh, the Rogers logo. So then that guy was then stabilized to line up with the Infinite logo, and then we just had a little added a little glow of like the trails preceding the. Uh, the outline which matched up just going over the people and then we transition in and then it does its logo formation which worked pretty well um, and I'll just go undo just so I can not have to render that whoops just prickly render it so we can check it out one more time and you said you had about four days to turn all this around for for the the crowd shot it was a couple I think two or three and then the rest of the stuff i think i was only scheduled for you know um yeah it's you know when they schedule the jobs on the like on the monday so they know you're going to work the weekend i think it was like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah all too well that's the laugh yeah. of someone yeah who knows that's, the, all. that's the, the pain. laugh of sadness there it's the pain um i'll just run through this but yeah, and there was other stuff. Again, this one was fun because it wasn't just the cleanup. It was more being able to comp and integrate because there was still a bunch of, uh, you know, comp and cleanup and the usual, you know, um, mm -hmm. just kind of scrub through. Yeah, I won't bother you cool. through that render. It's chugging along. Um, but then again, the other thing with this was there was little things like uh, this particular uh, shot here. If we go in. See if my computer explodes. Should be okay. Okay. All right. 
So this was the uh, the source, um, and it happened to be in a sketchier part of um, downtown. And their complaint was it looks kind of sketchy and ghetto. So it's like no shit. Um, but this is where we ended up for this. Um, so there's once this updates, this could take a second. But there was lots of cleanup, lots of like roto. Uh, let me go to where the Let's see, let's start here maybe. So this is the 3D track, which wasn't done in here. I think I used PF. Let me just turn down the, uh, the axis scale. There we go. And you can see like this is the extent of kind of what's going in. And again, it's nothing nothing special. It's just the usual, um, like I always do. I'm sure you guys know I'm like a projector whore. So literally just projections. So far, ninja comp and projector whore, the two hashtags that I'm going to um, put on this episode. And then I'm again, it, a running list. <laughs> and then this was uh, again just some fillback stuff for certain things. Um, and if I go back to so this is all my fillback roto. If we go through, so it was, and these were not farmed out too, so it was a good, painful exercise. So yeah, that was the extent of kind of the, <laughs> the put back. Um, and then I think this was just like, yeah, just to kind of hide some sins there. Mm -hmm. And then the wires. Um, uh, if I go to here and look at the output. So I always love doing this for wires. Um, it's like what I always will do with wires is I'll always do like a really tiny G mask, but all the way open, um, to like leave it open and then just split it out, soften it, just grab the color of what I'm trying to put it on. So if I go to, uh, again, it was just for these little bits right here, you know, but it's just was so much more easy and less painful than, you know, when you're trying to kind of get back in there and then you paint it and pixel spread it. And, yeah. you know, I just feel like that's the quickest. Yeah. So that was, again, that, that was probably the only other shot in there that was more complex. Um, these are just little things where we had to kind of change and some of them changed the take of people walking behind, um, which really helped the spot because, now everyone's, oh, now everyone's as, on as a story i couldn't follow it unless now everyone's on infinite better. um and then this one was like a last minute um oh it's yeah let's use a different take and pull back wider because he doesn't go out wide um and that was fun not fun because it was in a session where they asked that so that was good um <laughs> and, and that was when i was sharing with truck that's I, covered in a pattern you know yeah it was uh it was fun fun's the word kind of that one i had to make the skateboard slightly bigger just so you know, she's a skater girl. Um, <laughs> literally. Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, again, it was all about just kind of filling out. That was actually one that didn't have any work. All right. Um, and then these ones, again, these ones had like foreground people just to kind of, their whole thing was they really wanted to feel the crowd and, you know, make it feel big, which again, mm -hmm. I don't think they'd run this spot now because of everything. Uh, but yeah, so that's the, that's where the Rogers one is. And then the other one I'm going to show is, um, it's for a McDonald's spot I did, which was fun. Um, let me just open before, uh, before you switch yeah. over, does anybody have any questions? Oh yeah. Uh, people are taking, uh, people are taking, um, uh, requests for, uh, projector whore t-shirts, by the way. <laughs> Perfect. All right, looking good. I've been good. waiting for this. Cool. <laughs> All right, so the next one is a spot um, for McDonald's that was, I shared it last time because it was fun and this one didn't restore properly too, but you know, let's see it and watch it without the restore thing. So you get the true flame experience. Yes, is that a checkerboard? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this one was cool. They, uh, they shot in Colombia. Um, there was only like a little bit of like cleanup and alignments for, you know, checkerboards, checkerboards. It didn't even play the last bit. Okay, great. Um, and then let me see. So the end shot on that, which is this guy, let me load up my batch. So the end result was this, uh, but it shouldn't be, oh, no, not that one. That was the previous, here's my batch renders, okay. So this was uh, the end result of the final shot once we're there and we go through the cup and we transition to the drone footage from Colombian and it's like, you know, we really wanted to feel like we, you know, encapsulated in the thing. It's like, wow, that's not literal enough. 
So this was this was fun because uh, it was a chance to again not just do the the cleanup um, the usual stuff, right? Um, not mm -hmm. again. There was lots of little things that were um, cleaned up and you know the usual, uh, but this one was actually a, a rarity too because I kind of kept it neat too, which is actually good because usually I'm a bit messier. Um, but beautiful. this, yeah. Uh, this guy was also the the work that I had to do for the test, um, just because the team um, always forgets that you've been doing your job for the last you know fifteen years, and they just think that you're some dude they just hired, and they always forget that, and they need to see a test <laughs> of where you're at. <laughs> so, the first test I did over the weekend um, was actually really great. Like uh, it was using a different cup and uh, and a still, and uh, they approved that to go ahead with and I was great because uh, we we're on the same page. Um, they approved the test and then and then they changed it 15 times over the next two weeks. Here. No, literally this one was like, uh, you know, that's great. Let's, let's do it. It was like amazing. <laughs> nice. So yeah, so this, uh, so this one's cool too because I use um, techniques I use, um, which you guys probably already know about. So this is just using, you know, the default, uh, the default brush, right? Just doing that or whatever. So that's just freezing one frame. And then I'm just kind of transforming it to make it smaller. And I was again playing with these as I was building. I got a little blur to kiss it in. And then my old friend Recursive Ops. So all I've done with Recursive, you can't see my, my, my lower part of my screen, um, but it's, I've just enabled crumple distortion to like 65. I've enabled blur, the, like pumped it up. And then it's just max lighten again. And I enabled the 2D transform scale. And if I press play, you see, you get this really cool, um, I don't know if that, I'll have to scrub through and that doesn't let you scrub with this. Yeah, this happens sometimes when you mirror your, uh, your UI, but I'll go to where it, uh, the pre-render and, and again, after I did it, all I added was little, um, what's this updates? I'll scrub through, you see, this is kind of the, uh, the cool, it's not so you don't, scrubbing's working. So it gets this cool kind of organic reveal, like blob mm -hmm. thing. And then from there, I just kind of blurred the shit out of it again. And then kind of just, you know, time warped histogram just to kiss everything into black and white and then negated just for what I'm using it downstream with and we'll let this do it. And that's that reveal mat that is chugging oh, and that's why I pre-rendered. So here's the final look of that mat. It should, it should work for this because it's actually full screen and not just in batch, but if I press play, You see, you get this cool, quick bleed through, and then yeah, it actually works. I don't know. I just thought it was a cool oh, texture, a, and I hate. Um, I hate. Uh, I always try to not use stock if I can. I mean, I know there's sometimes you have to, um, but that was just you know half an hour of experimenting, and and you know it worked. So this oh, great. this next part of this. Um, so there was intricacies that had to be replicated. So the source drone footage was this, um, you know, and we ended up having to put in, uh, let's see, some extra clouds, some extra uh, mountains, just again, just, I'm just grabbing and scaling up and using the, the same motion. So it's easy just to put back in. And again, I've taken the, uh, the zoom out because I wanted to be able to control that when I pass through. Mm -hmm. But this is really an example of a shot where you do, especially with the transitions and, and all that, like I always find they just need so much jigging to work properly because you're working with mixed res and, you know, stuff like that can be fun. So the, the actual uh, label, um, so they, they had the artist on hold who did the illustration for this to do it, but then it fell through. Um, so we ended up having to rebuild that because some of the, uh, they wanted to essentially line up as close as possible. So there was a lot of uh, screwing around done on just getting that right. So this was the graphic I used for some parts um, that I would just grab bits and elements in my main batch here, which is, once it wakes up. So you see, this is all like these guys placed, um, not in 3D properly, but just to in a 2D world so I can put them back on later. So this was using their, their artwork pattern. And then along with uh, some of, where is it? Uh, 
should be stylized. It'll be stylized after. Where is it? Somewhere here. All right, so this is the track, <clears throat> excuse me. This is the track after um, of just the, uh, the, the portions just that felt right to kind of do it. And the sad thing is a lot of it gets lost in the, um, the motion blur, but that's uh, but it's a fair know. trade off. It's a fair trade off. Um, can, can I just see the schematic of, your, of that main action and paint build where you, where you yeah. uh, took all the little bits and pieces? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. wow, So it's just man. a bunch of that. Beautiful. Um, and then again, this was <clears throat> the build and reveal. So if I go, so front and back for this, and then my transition's happening just over like uh, 12 or so frames. And if I just scrub through and look at the result, once it wakes up. All the fans are spinning right now. <laughs> uh, surprisingly not. All right, so I'm scrubbing through. You see, it was like about tracking them, and then like even like those little uh, the little cloud things up the top. Once this mm -hmm. works, it was a nice again like or organic reveal. And then again, like you get the timing right on that, but then when you see it in context with the cup move, you you know, it's a lot of you know fiddling and back and forth. Um, That's but, beautiful, though, man. Right, it's like finding those uh, anchor points between the, the, uh, the artwork on the cup and, and what we shot with the drone. Yeah, I even used for some of it, um, it's somewhere in here. Uh, I don't, where did I put it? I'm pretty sure I used, uh, here we go. I used this for which portion? I think it was the most of the trees cause that, yeah. So this part I used and I'm like, they can't tell, you can't tell the difference between the artwork and this one, you know what I mean? But that was mm -hmm. just using uh, stylized and just finding and tweaking um, you know, a preset and oh. just free, freezing it because- Oh the, man, that's great. Yeah. Because again, for this stuff, it's, it was too different and too intricate and I just couldn't get it right. But for the, the landscape, it kind of, I don't know, because I was going in there and putting each guy in and it was just a, not fun after a while. All right. So- <laughs> The next part was building the, uh, the cup. So this is another example of that was a multi chip clip. So I'm just gonna quickly do a 2D histo on that. Just so, whoops, it has to be on that. Okay, that seems to raise up just to make that white. So the edges when you see this might look weird, but the source footage for this guy was this. And I was like, please make sure you put tracking markers that are pointless on there. And they did, so that worked out good. <laughs> Um, and again, so just some paint and cleanup. Um, and again, I just used the frame for this um, uh, at full res. So it was uh, 3,200 by 1,800 or whatever. But then my, into my main guy here, this is where I do my first, it's how I'd like to do my screen and cups and stuff. I always like to kind of set it up on a frame. Again, ignore the edges because that was just me doing the, the Luma key because the alpha. Um, and then that's where I kind of Chose the bits that I wanted to be able to control after on that cup. And you see, once they go through here, I just multiply them back into where the label was for the reveal mat type of thing. And they kind of get mm -hmm. blur out. And then we've got our, again, this is all being fed. So if I go here, so that's being then fed by like that same reveal mat just on that portion. Um, so again, that was just to line up when we go into this guy, which is the main, uh, the main move. But again, uh, so the cup stuff is where I was talking about. So I always will set up my, my frame of like, okay, it's in there more. And then I like to just be able to tweak. So it, for instance, here, this was my light wrap type of thing, just for that, that right part, which was already having that, uh, that kick right there. Mm -hmm. And again, there's another little hit in here of just adding a color source and just kind of kissing that in just to kind of reintroduce. And then again, this is just more, uh, again, for the top part, it's barely there, but it's just putting that kind of shadow back in. Oh, sure. And then doing a little bit of a harder one. And then just a little edge blur as per use. And then again, here's my color source for projections. And there's my cup that I, Again, just grab the frame that's actually not moving. 
and then everything gets built in the uh, yeah this action here. So this was yeah. So this was the counter which I which I used for that, and then this was the background um, just to because of, you know when we're projecting and we have parallax we're revealing. So this is just shrinking in, um, just using bicubics. Uh, again, you could have used the um, pixel spread way of just uh, feeding the mat and contracting it inward. I didn't think about that, and it would have been quicker probably because you know bicubics can really slow you down. Um, but yeah, and then so this is where it started to get built. So in this guy, um, it's not the craziest setup, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, so again, if I go to space f four and I look through, so this is what is set up. Really simple. Um, Pretty sure even the, yeah, the geo was just the, one of the default cubes, uh, not cubes, uh, or a cup. I might have used the cup actually. Let me just, um, I think I just downloaded a, a cup uh, model. I'll just paste it in an action and just add a light so we can see. And yeah, so I kind of downloaded a, you know, really super detailed cup. <laughs> And then just projected it on again, just using um, the normal. I'm always a diffuse guy for projectors. I only use the projectors node when um, when I'm doing uh, UVs and stuff. Really, I just mm -hmm. I just I just don't gravitate towards it. Um, so yeah, so the, this is set up in three stages. So in my outputs, so there's one that's a label mat, which is that thing that had the animation before that you saw but it's the reveal. So now it participates in the camera moves. So the key with this is I wanted everything to be able to happen upstream. And anytime I did change camera mover timing, I didn't have to worry about repiping and, you know, passing through. So that was that label mat. And then we have our start label, which again is just participating in that camera move. And then our end label, which is this guy, but before the, uh, again, that's, this is why part of why that guy was built oversized too. Um, mm -hmm. Because when I did, I did my default uh, extender, you know, for uh, uh, using the perspective and, you know, extending it out, but you could really notice the repeat. So I just kind of gave in and I knew I had to do it oversize to be able to get enough of that detail in there for the, uh, for the reveal for it to work. So that's that part. And if I go here, this is just after, this was just hiding some sins of, uh, because I was using uh, motion vectors and uh, the motion blur was just freaking out around those edges there. You see that? Um, yep. But everything else was looking great. So it was literally just um, a quick and dirty um, uh, reveal mat just for that, just to mm -hmm. help me through to kiss that together. And then once we kind of go in there, open that up. So again, I'm just going to make that full screen, press play. I'll loop it. You see, transition works. Feels pretty good. Again, it was just a fun one to kind of really tinker with. And again, like if I scrub through, you can see that foreground plane of the cut that happened here and that previous mat too kind of helps because it feels a little bit like a like an extra dimension going past into that uh, into into that world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it uh it worked out really good. And I was actually pretty happy with that. The only other thing that was in there um, was just the generic, uh, that's not gonna work because of alphas, but it was literally just the, uh, the track for the, um, this is the only part I didn't plan smartly. Um, and this is why I like to go home and rethink things sometimes. Um, was mm -hmm. this one I was like, oh, uh, I tracked to track it in here instead of after, but it was also like, which point do I do it? Because if I do it in the previous one, I have to worry about scale for, if the text is going to be legible and you know what I mean? So totally. I still think I could have done that part in a better way, but um, yeah, that again, it's uh, every job is a learning experience as you know, but yeah, that's kind of um, where that one goes. I'm going to see if there's anything else on the, um, the main spot. Let me see. That's great though, man. Does anybody Let's have see. any questions for, for Joel? Yeah, man, I, I always love watching your demos, Joel, because they're so it's it's um, everything you can you can see uh, everything's well thought out. I mean, you can see even just in how you have the schematic laid out, you know, like the thought process behind. 
that's um that's part of my thing too is i do you remember do you remember for, before we had uh, elbows or whatever knobs or what i don't know what we're allowed to call them um you remember when they were messier it was always uh oh yeah but i still find myself doing it and it's the uh where is it uh, if we go here it's the when you are you know wherever i still love that this is what this was why me being messy before was fine because whatever you selected you did the alt double click you go back out here and you see where it is you know oh, i didn't I mean? know about that yeah so that that's what got me through the messy times so if, if i'm using a different source any Wait. any selected media source alt double click and then you go out and it automatically shows you where it's where it's going. oh god all right, thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, I'm writing that one down. I mean, I know I'm recording this, and but I'm writing that one down. Yeah, I'll that use one's, that, that tomorrow. Oh. But yeah, that's, I think that's all that was stored. Let me just have a quick look. <laughs> the, the chat is, is exploding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's Let's, awesome. Let me see what's in this one. This was just nothing fancy, I don't think. Yeah, this is just some cleanup. There was a, a kind of time lapsey shot that was done, but uh, I don't have the setup. It was this guy, which was just using stills. If I just press play, mm -hmm. but you know, using stills, adding like little rain elements, the usual thing with um, you know with time lapse. And I think sure. I used a, a Lewis. I think I used Lewis's sweat too. I'm sorry, Ivar. If you made a sweat one, I'd, I'd use it, I promise. <laughs> so the rivalry will be born here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's yeah, kind of where I ended up and what I was hoping to show. But yeah, if anyone has any questions or wants to like uh, swear at me for working a certain way, you're welcome to. That's great. Um, just a couple of things off, just off the top of my head. What version are you running? Uh, right now I am, um, let me see. I wish there was an easier way. References, is it help? What's new? This is how I always know. Um, I think it's 2020.2. So cool. yeah, 2020.2. And, and what, what kind of machine do you have at home? Everybody always, uh, yeah. Always so this, to hear. this is, um, it was going to be another build that I was, I was a few years, uh, a year and a half ago, I was going to do another uh, Linux build thing and I was going to show um, uh, uh, like I was going to do a triple boot machine. I was going to have like a uh, Windows, Mac and uh, uh, the Linux base for, for, uh, for Flame, but, but all through like a virtual machine. So it would be a virtualized machine. So I was going to be able to tab between, but it would run GPU hardware pass through. And I was working on that for a long time. And then I was getting closer with it and I was going to do some tutorials on it, but then um, I ended up going full time. And um, I'm going to stop talking. So you don't think I'm a frog. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Let me go back. Um, let me do this. Go back here. Here. Oh, the share. Yeah, I'll just do this. So I can just toggle through. Hey. But yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I really wanted to kind of get that going, and I had like three GPUs ready, and it was going to be like pass through, and it was progressing. I just had one, like the the Linux one was working, the the Windows one was working. I was just having trouble with the Mac one working because I had a, a Radeon seven sixteen gig GPU. But anyway, so this machine then went on hold because I went uh, full time somewhere. And uh, it just sat here until the, uh, the this situation. And I still had my old machine I used to that I built the custom one. But mm -hmm. I was like, why not make this one my new flame one? Because I haven't used it. So it's a yeah, it's a uh, it's a Threadripper uh, 2950x. I think it's a 16 core with and then 32 cores for hyper threading, which is bullshit in my opinion. Um, and then. <laughs> 120 gig of ram but it's not like crazy fast ram it's just like whatever um uh it's one of my titans so it's the titan x um before the p but it was pascal so 12 gig of gpu ram which i find is more than enough for a lot of my stuff um 16 would be nicer but i, I don't want to spend a couple grand just for a quadro right now you know um and then it's just uh 
yeah, it just gets, my second screen gets looped up through uh, HDMI into my other machine, which I have just a capture card, um, which then I will say when I do sessions now too, um, I do a YouTube live link um, and essentially screen sharing my, my broadcast monitor output and audio is in sync and it's 1080 60. And cause I have uh, fiber here, it's like really good and it's been working well. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I haven't heard of anybody using uh, YouTube live. I've, I've done like client sessions with zoom and uh, I just, that's one thing I've loved. I mean, I know that there are a lot of, of very high end professional solutions out there, but at the same time, uh, which are great. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, but to, to see like how people have figured out, um, you know, the workarounds uh, and gotten them to work so successfully is just, I love it. Yeah. It's, um, it's the geeking, best bit, but I love it. The best bit for me with the, the HDMI app. And I know everyone, if they have an office one, it's not as easy because of uh, it's usually display port or, you know, is because it's HDMI app. That's where I tell my audio. So it's automatically embedded. So when it goes through there, there's no sync stuff. It's just like, it sees the same signal and it's done. You know, it's a little bit, you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about the 44, 48 shit. It's just like, works oh that's excellent and uh kudos on the classic uh, wacom pen i see that in your hand I, yeah, yeah, yeah you know i mean this is a I got this one. one yeah i got this from my mac but you know this is this is what's running the flame so i had a big one this is just a little one it's just like a you know a little one. Oh yeah big, i had a big one when i was freelance but then i was, a, I was having lunch at my desk which i never do and it happened to be like instant noodles and i fucking spilt it all over and killed it and then i found this one on uh kijiji for like 50 bucks yep so yeah worked out good i can tell you without um without admitting uh responsibility for um spilling coffee on my wacom tablet which i'm i just again to clarify i'm not admitting it's the, like the old one like the ptz 631 you know, it's, it's what what you showed there these are available on ebay by the way for 13 dollars <laughs> it's crazy now so um I don't know about the pens, but uh, should you, you know, pen, for some reason. The pen, I actually got lucky, actually. I bought mine without a pen because my pen still worked. I was banking on mm -hmm. it still working. Um, I saw a question Amen. from uh, Paul. Uh, yeah, from Paul. Do you guys think clients will trust work from home uh, more uh, more now in the future? Uh, I, I think, think so. I think so. I think, yeah, this, this whole work from home uh, thing, you know, was kind of thrust upon us. And I think it, if nothing else, it took the stigma away. And I think it's going to kind of change online's a bit too you know i think a lot of places that do uh, front of house stuff aren't going to be as uh willing to be the person that maybe got someone sick now you know like i think there's like for me i like the work from home because i'm really shit with people's names so being in the zoom call with everyone's <laughs> name i'm like on it and it works really well but i also have found I've, ever since all of this even pre because usually again you know we're the most expensive part of it coloring online Usually you only have that small window unless you've been part of the pre-shoot and you know done all that stuff. Whereas now I've found I'm spending even more time with people uh, just experimenting before the online. So I'm giving more of a chance to kind of build a relationship uh, that you wouldn't get to when you're you know in a normal, which is different, you know? It's mm -hmm. in a different way. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I, and it, again, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm I'm the eternal optimist, which means I'm usually disappointed, but um, I've, I've been seeing, uh, you know, opportunities here in, the, in the, the whole lockdown to kind of maybe shift the, the workflow from certain habits and patterns that have developed over the years, you know, uh, into and just to uh, taking advantage of it to find ways to, to either improve the relationship you have with the client or get in, you know, earlier or just, uh, I don't know, make it better, really the short mm -hmm. way. Cool. Does anybody have any more questions for Joel? Oh, here comes one. From Brooks, with your work from home sessions, do you have them watching you all day or do you just chime in when you're ready to show them something? Um, I usually, I'll usually send them out a link. Sometimes it'll be like that they're there the whole day, but then if they ever do happen to go off, like I'll only be sharing my, my screen because then we'll be on the, the Zoom or whatever, or the Hangouts for chat. So my voice is synced because of the audio, like because the actual delay from where I'm scrubbing into what YouTube sees is like just under two seconds. I usually will leave it on um, if they are stepping away just so they can at least, and I can see, right? It's the best way you can see how many con concurrent viewers there are. And if they're still, I mean, they could just be still logged in um, with the page on another thing, but you, at least then as well, I like it that they can see what we're doing and see that we're not, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of, mm -hmm. 
I also like to, when I do do that, to show my screen share like I did there in the way of, it's not just the broadcast out. Because I find, again, that's just another thing that separates it from we just push buttons and it's like easy. Yeah. Oh, that's when, um, that's how I would always do my client supervised sessions. I would switch over to like the show, show, show all or whatever it is on uh, always show screen. So that way they could see me roto. They could see me, they could, they could see how the, the sausage gets made and they get engaged. They sit there and watch, you know. Well, I've actually found even like, I've been a privy to a lot more um, conversations with client and agency too. Cause usually, I don't know from your experience, but usually it's done, you know, they'll take a room or something when they're, you know, if they're trying to whatever, but because we're all on the same call and they'll just come in, I'm actually part of that conversation now too. So I'm getting more, uh, insight into the the source of the pain you know mm -hmm. so i have a lot more empathy when when you know some jobs are just shit shows which you know some are and some aren't and that's why you appreciate the ones that aren't um but yeah it's um it's kind of opened me up to see more like we're all just reacting right yeah oh yeah well i mean you're you're a partner in this like you said you know you're i was you're trying to help them not only solve their problems but like make their dreams come true and if you can if you can you know hear direct from like either their client or whatever the feedback is, you know, what, what the problem is, you know, what the, the, the concern or the challenge is, then you can be, you know, you can either, I mean, the nice way of saying it is you can help them, you know, find a solution to the problem, but also you can sometimes find a solution that still makes you feel creatively fulfilled, you know, yeah. and not just make the logo bigger or make the shadow darker or whatever it is, you know, if like, you know, readability is a concern. Um, there's a question here. Uh, from an anonymous attendee, mm -hmm. which uh, is an alliterative name, and I do appreciate a good alliterative name um, that I don't know if we can answer, but uh, what is the day rate range for work from home flame, considering what we carry, that we carry the cost of software, utilities, et cetera? Um, I mean, like, like when I was freelance, you can, it, it just depends. Some, you can go Canadian from, I know that it can vary from say eight to 12 or even 1500. I know some people even charge more. Um, mm -hmm. But I just, if you are going to do that, you could, you should incorporate that cost into your rate. Um, and, you know, if you are worried about your rate, be prepared to stand by it because people talk it down. But like, also if you are going to charge a, at the higher end, be prepared to produce at the higher end, you know? Completely. Yeah, you know, I get questions. Uh, I've seen them on Logic, but I get them a lot also, you know, of um, sh should I charge a different rate if I have uh, my own system at home? You know, I mean, this is pre everybody being at home. But uh, the answer really was it's all over the map. I know freelancers who have their own system that charge the same, whether they work on their system or they come and use yours. I know some that charge less to come into the office and use your system. And I know some that charge more, you know, it, it really depends as much on your clients and your, and the market you're in, I think. I mean, so. when I was, when I was freelance before, I, I just had a flat rate. I didn't bother with that. Like, uh, I didn't even have like a cancellation last minute thing. Cause it, I don't know. It didn't, it never screwed me, I guess. And maybe that's why, but I always had uh, a good amount of consistent work. So I was lucky in that way. But I mean, and mm -hmm. again, it's like literally it's like anything. It's how, how detailed do you want to be, you know? Yep. Um, here's a question, another one from Brooks that uh, I actually wanted to ask you. Uh, I noticed um, all the master grade notes you had in batch and I've spent, that's one of the things I've been doing during the lockdown is trying new things. Um, maybe because I don't have a client over my shoulder and I've been using master grade more and more and more and love it. Um, Brooks is wondering what you think about color on flame now with all the new tools. Um, I, I still, I still think it's like, say for instance, the, the effects tab, I still feel like that's a work in progress. Um, just personally, um, like it gets really not intuitive when you, if you work vertically and you have some gap effects and you have, you know, transitions, like it's, I feel like it's more designed just for color. I do like the, um, like the master grades note is great, but I'd still wish we had some, stuff that we didn't have to rely on for, for user generated stuff like um, match boxes with like color match and stuff. Cause I still find myself, even though I know it's not the right math for when I'm just trying to get stuff in to start with, I will still use, um, you know, the color correct for the, for the match or the, the color warper match 
or just the way I can just pull off the highlights um, with the histogram in the color corrector. Like I can't do that with the master grade. So I, I use more the master grade just for finer, because again, it's, it's, you can do finer uh, increments. So if I'm kind of mm -hmm. putting stuff somewhere, I find it a lot more better. Um, for gamma stuff, I find it good. But then the, again, it's like, a, I just feel like it, it still kind of goes from, you get into clamp and overvalued values really quickly, I find. And it could just be I'm not used to it enough, but I just, I, I'll, I, again, I'm using it more for like finesse into certain areas without being heavy handed and for, uh, again, uh, just gamma adjustments and just kind of brightness because it handles that better for me. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you have a, 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 like a color calibrated monitor at home? Do you have a program monitor at home? Uh, no. So I'm just using a uh, uh, LG, uh, It's like an LG, uh, there. It's a 31 by nine, a 21 by nine, 34 inch. My middle one's just like for my broadcast app, which, which is the uh, Windows, which is just like a 4K monitor. Um, and then I just have another monitor. See, for me, it's like, uh, it's even like when I was freelance, I'm always going to, I'm always gonna be working with what's already colored. You know, this, this, this monitor here is, um, it's full, uh, it's full sRGB. So it's not like a Rec 709, but it's full sRGB. And it's like, I've never had stuff come back in color because I'm always getting something that is already colored and I'm going to either match it into that. You know what I mean? Totally. Um, I, and I always my, I never used the, I know it's like, you know, sacrilege and whatever for some people who do do it. But like I, I for my home setup, it's just my, H, my extra HDMI out. Uh, mm -hmm. in, into another monitor, you know? I hear you. I think I have the same uh, LG monitor at home. I, I, I love it. Yeah, it's perfect. You don't, you can work in two up a lot and still have the media panel and it's great. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Anybody have any other questions for Joel? Alex has some, uh, some feedback about using uh, the effects tab. Make sure you use the so Definitely check out the... Uh, the chat window guys okay yeah i just i i know it's good i just need to ex like i i haven't i haven't had a chance to really put it through its paces yet and I, that's part of because on in the first iteration of the beta when it was still called image or image tab or whatever image tab or um i just didn't feel like it was there yet but um i should kind of give it a go more. I do like that it's in that same world of, as Luster of just being able to kind of pop through really quickly. But that's also what I don't like too is when it's just like when you're on the, on the timeline and you have, you know, some heavier batch effects or whatever and you do jump to it, even if it's rendered, sometimes it still will just think for a second. It's like, I don't know if you've ever hard committed something that's completely rendered on the timeline with a bunch of multiple batch effects and it's heavier. You go add a, a dummy layer on top and add two two points just for a, uh, you know, cuts in and then try to hard commit it. You get a lag when it adds that, those points usually, unless it's like to the, to the clip duration. I don't know. I just don't like, I don't feel the, the speed is what it should be. Cause what the coolest part of what the image tab or the effects tab should bring to me is what the efficiency and speed that you get from luster was. And I still don't feel the same with that. But I feel like they're making yeah. strides with the, uh, you know, the the viewer now and the still store. That's all getting better. But it's like, you know, there's just more things I think that need to be there. Like it'd be really cool, I think, if there was a in the media hub where you can save stills. Like it'd be so cool to just not be able to have a no bin, but just grab a, you know, your FBX camera and that's saved as an icon in your thing with all your stuff. Or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like stuff like that should still not be hidden in a menu where you save and then take, you know, stuff like that shouldn't take you out of the interface. Yeah. But, but it's, again, it's, it's still being developed. So I can't complain. Yeah. Step by step. I think in, in, uh, I started using the effects tab more in 2021. We just got 2021 installed uh, company wide. Mm -hmm. um, just with that whole compare workflow. Now you have the option to at least compare, you know, if you're trying to line up, a sh even something as simple as trying to line up a repo in action, you know, just being able to, to do that uh, and, and see your rough cut or whatever was uh, changed it for me. Or it gave it like, 
it became something that I wasn't, I, I intentionally didn't use because that feature wasn't available to me in whatever yeah. version we were running, you know, um, it opened it up. And then I think in, also in 2021, like switching from the effects tab to the timeline tab is a lot quicker. Um, I guess just from refinements under the hood, but uh, I haven't had an opportunity yet. Like I really want to try it. Um, when I have some, some time to like figure out mistakes, you know, or figure out pitfalls. Like so far, the things I've done while I've been on lockdown here that have been conform related have been that like, here's all your prep. 92% of it is going to be a shit storm. And it's, you know, we're all waiting for you. Is it done? Mm-hmm. And so in, in, in that environment, I can't really kind of, you know, experiment with yeah, a brand new workflow. And it doesn't you know? call for that task anyway, kind of. Yes, yeah, right. As much. Yeah. It right, needs right, the right, right job with the right amount of time. And yeah. Cool. I'll check. All right, my friend. Too, Alex. Oh, he was saying it's the new FX Explorer, uh, mm-hmm. which works in batch now too. Yeah. I just need to play more. Uh, for, like for the same reasons that Andrew just said for that. It's like, uh, yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much, Joel. This was awesome. I truly appreciate it. Alt double tap for the win. And uh, no, but seriously, man, thank you for always like sharing so much with the community. And uh, and it was just great to see you again. It's um, a pleasure. And I'm always humbled that uh, people find my stuff so useful. So yeah, it's, um, it's always a pleasure. And I hope to do more of these uh, tutorials and breakdowns soon too. I've been had an interesting couple of years, but yeah, I'm going to try and get back into the swing of it. Sweet. Cool. Well, thanks, dude. Appreciate right, it. Guys. All right. Let's Glad close this out here. Just move the 10,000 zoom windows. Even if you have an ultra wide monitor and a second monitor, it's never, I find it's never enough. So yeah, definitely check out Joel's website, joelosis.com for uh, all of his tutorials. And uh, let's see what we have coming up for you here. Uh, coming up on Logic Live, I have a whole bunch of sessions lined up. Next Sunday, we're going to interview Stefan Labrie from Autodesk to talk about all the uh, parts of the software that he's in charge of. So much stuff under the hood. So many things that, like you know, uh, maybe they may, they may not be as as sexy as uh, machine learning, but you know, you use them every single day. And he's also like the funniest guy in the world. So I'm really looking forward to that interview. That's going to be followed uh, by the Sausage King of Chicago himself, Brian Higgins, on July 12th, Andy Davis on July 19th, Naveen Srivastava, uh, also from Toronto, on July 26th, August 2nd, we're going to view Fred from Autodesk, August 9th, we're going back to Chicago for Randy McEntee, and August 16th, uh, we got some uh, great feedback from users who wanted to hear more about how Flame is used in production with Shotgun. So we're going to do a whole session on that on August 16th. I also have a big announcement. Uh, we're going to start doing a Logic Live podcast, uh, and I hope to have one ready for you guys in the next week or so. Uh, so get ready for those. I know I've gotten some feedback from from uh, users or from uh, Uh, users and listeners who want to be able to listen to this stuff uh, as opposed to just watch it. So we're going to do a podcast series. Be sure to check out all of our past episodes and a bunch of other great content on logic.tv. And please take a moment to subscribe to our, uh, to the uh, YouTube page. We're already up to 470 subscribers. Uh, I want to thank again, our, uh, our sponsor, Synesis Oceana solutions, integration and support for digital content creators. Find out all that they have to offer at cynicis.io, supporting Flame Artists since 1997. That's gonna do it, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time.